Okay. So hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Fab Woman event. This is the second event out of three. So um, we did have one this past Friday. We're having today, then we're actually having one on Friday as well. Um, so I am Jessica Sanchez. I'm the Senior Activation Manager with GT Universe, working in partnership with Jewel Lasco to bring these Fab Woman events to you guys. And Fab stands for food and beverage. So these are fab women um, inside that can be all found inside of Joasco stores. And today we're highlighting um, a few brands that are led by women. And we have some exciting stuff coming for you guys. We have some um, information about Char Boys, Made Good, Lifeway, Heroes, on all the above. So we cannot wait to get started. And um, yeah, I think without further ado, We'll get started with our first guest, Pamela Jones of Charboys. Here, and uh, I want to make sure you know that Charboys sauces. Uh, there's a line of five of them. Uh, there's a hot sweet Asian, which is gluten free. There's a bourbon made with a bourbon teriyaki made with real bourbon. There's a barbecue with all natural ingredients, and there are two different ketchups. One's extra hot, one's mild. And the great thing about these ketchups is they come with no corn syrup. So without further de delay, we have a great cooking video to demonstrate featuring Charboy's Hot Sweet Asian and Charboy's Bourbon Teriyaki. Welcome to Char Boys, and in today's recipe, we're going to feature hot sweet Asian sauce. This sauce is great for a stir fry, and we're going to do seafood stir fry today for you. First thing we're going to add is green peppers. We're going to add some red peppers, some broccoli, some snow peas, minced garlic, green onion, white onion and red onion. Next we're going to drizzle this with this special hot sweet Asian. What's great about this sauce is it's gluten free so it's great for your family and it has a great tangy taste. And the next thing we're going to add it to our seafood as well and in this seafood today I have some scallops, I have shrimp, and we also have some tasty calamari. So I just added the sauce. We're going to toss the vegetables a little bit. And we're also going to toss our seafood, and then we're going to take it to stovetop. And last, we've got some scallops here and some large shrimp that we're going to add our Charboys bourbon sauce with a little bit of grated lemon zest and a little bit of cracked pepper. And we're going to add these right to our grill and cook them up. And these are beautiful shrimp. So we plated our shrimp and scallops over rice, and this recipe featured the bourbon sauce from Charboys. It's excellent. And our other stir fry option that we just made real quick that's great for a family weeknight dinner is our seafood stir fry. This one has our vegetables and it features our seafood is calamari, shrimp, and scallops. And this one I've got to try. Thanks for sharing, Pamela. I love the sound of all that sizzling. That was so good. Oh, thank you, thank you. So that was that was great and amazing, and thank you for that. Um, 
Um, so charbroiled sauces can be used in so many ways, you know, and the best part about these sauces, they're all lower in sodium and sugars compared to most brands in its category. So what I've done is I put together just some examples how you can make some great quick dishes with charbroiled sauces. So if you just get a kebab, you can make a shrimp and a chicken kebab, mmm, and just drizzle over the sauce after it's cooked. Just that simple, it's all done. Real simple and easy. Then I've got some great bourbon teriyaki wings, chicken wings. Yeah, with a little side salad. Now even with this side salad, you can drizzle a little bit of Charboy's Hot Sweet Asian on that. And this would be your bourbon sauce made with real bourbon, which is always great. And this is a great sauce you can use for everything. Bourbon pot rolls, bourbon glazed ham, bourbon sea scallops is an appetizer. And uh, on the salmon as well. Then we have our wonderful uh, barbecue sauce here. And of course, you gotta have that with those delicious, delicious ribs, right? Okay, so those are good for that. And uh, we have two ketchups and it's becoming very popular to some people out there. We have the uh, ketchup with no corn syrup, that's the, the extra hot, and then there's the mild. So Jewel carries the hot sweet Asian bourbon and the barbecue, and then you can check out charboys.com to find out the locations that carry these two hot spicy ketchups. So with that said, um, I think we've got everything covered here, but I must say one thing is that all these delicious, oh, we got some shrimp here. I almost left those out. Look at those gorgeous shrimp. Now what I have here with that gorgeous shrimp is a dipping sauce you can make, and all you do is add a little mayo into the ketchup, and you got a nice Nice spicy mayo sauce. That, too, sort of those that looks absolutely delicious, Pamela. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for sharing all about your sauces. That awesome yes. video that just made all of us hungry, as I was seeing in the chat function. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now we'll move on to our next guests, which okay. is Salma and Saba of Made Good. Hi, ladies. How are you doing today? Very good, thank you very much. Um, my name is Saba. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Made Good. First of all, thank you to Fab Woman um, for uh, having us at this, uh, participate at this event. We really appreciate it. Um, so I'm just gonna give a little quick uh, background about the brand um, uh, Made Good. So it, it is a family owned business. Uh, my siblings and I co-founded Made Good in uh, 2013. Uh, we do come from a very entrepreneurial family. Um, uh, our father was uh, always in food manufacturing and had a big passion for food. And uh, when we moved to Canada, we, uh, he started another business, uh, again, food manufacturing. And we all got involved uh, as we, you know, um, evolved in the business. And, um, you know, we were organic before organic was cool <laughs> back in 1992. Uh, so it was, it was quite a journey for us. And then um, the three, uh, my siblings and I, we... Um, we wanted to start something on our own, and that's when, when Made Good uh, was born. Uh, it has been quite a journey, um, and if, for, for some of you who may not know, Made Good is, a, is an organic uh, brand, uh, allergen, top allergen free, um, and it's uh, granola bars, mini cereals, cookies, uh, the, the, the list just goes on. But uh, the, main, uh, the main thing when we started Made Good was we wanted to provide a solution for families. We wanted to provide a solution for parents. Um, we know there's a lot of choices out there, and, and it can get overwhelming for parents. And we wanted to create a win-win where they can give a snack to their children where it won't be thrown back at them. <laughs> so it would, uh, you know, that it will have a very uh, low return rate when it's put in a, in a lunch box so that it would check off many boxes for parents. Um, the main obviously taste that we will never launch a product that does not taste good, but it will also delivers on, um, on nutri nutrition. So all of our made good products uh, have, uh, have, you know, an, have vegetables equivalent to one serving of vegetables, uh, which is amazing. And uh, and we also have, like, as I said, allergen free and uh, dairy free, uh, um, gluten free, uh, all the free. <laughs> so all the boxes can be checked off for parents. But but mainly uh, it was a, it had to be a win win. Um, but on top of all the features of the products, um, um, we wanted to also make sure that Made Good actually does good um, beyond the product features. Um, so I'm just gonna hand it off to my, my sister Salma, one of the other co-founders of Made Good, to kind of elaborate a little bit about um, what the product also stands for. Thank you, Sapa. Um, just upon reflecting, I think one of the best, uh, uh, best things about owning our own company is the opportunity to affect positive change in, uh, in areas and causes that we're really passionate about. 
So as Safa mentioned, we're, we're family owned and operated. Uh, so we're not publicly traded and, and we're not, uh, you know, uh, unlike publicly uh, traded companies whose mandate is to maximize profits, uh, we take our successes and invest back into our people, our communities and the environment. So from its infancy, Made Good was, I think we launched in 2013. Uh, we wanted to make sure it was a triple bottom line company and it had triple bottom line philosophy. So profit, people and planet. So in addition to being financially sound, we wanted to make sure that we also considered the people and the planet and, they were all, and that they were always important stakeholders in every decision and every aspect of the company. And we're also strong believers in you got to lead by example. And it starts with us and it starts within our own house. So in our own facility, in our own manufacturing plant, we got to do it first before we can hold other people accountable. So, which is why a couple of initiatives I just want to touch on is uh, we have a zero waste. So our plant, our manufacturing plant is uh, zero waste certified. What does that mean? That means that not over 90% of the waste that's generated is diverted from the landfill. And we ensure that every single person from the plant uh, production, manufacturing, maintenance is, is paid a living wage. So not a minimum wage, but a living wage. So uh, we, try to do whatever we can to support both the planet and the people. And the other area that we're really passionate about is uh, women equality uh, and empowerment. Sapo and I were fortunate enough to have a lot of really great women role models when we were growing up and we're still in a company of a lot of them. So this was always an important family cause for us. So much so that my parents in their retirement are building schools uh, in uh, remote regions and impoverished communities. I think they're on their fifth school right now and, it, and obviously emphasizing uh, education for girls. So uh, we believe that uh, you know, in order for women to have a voice at the table, education is priority. Uh, and we've set out to do that both as a family and as well as, uh, as a business. So there's a lot of opportunity to, go, to do good uh, and one made good at a time. So uh, thank you for listening. I love that. I love hearing about your company and uh, just knowing that it's a zero waste company and so much woman empowerment here. And I love hearing that. <laughs> um, and just a quick note, um, Made Good, Charboys, and the rest of these products that we're going to hear about can all be found at Jewelosco. So make sure to pick that up and support these beautiful women. Um, so now, without further ado, we're going to head over to our next speaker, and that is Susan from McCabe's Granola. I, took a, I really wanted to talk about the evolution of our brand and where we've gone and, and what our brand represents and how we've evolved from um, being a, a woman-owned business. I'm not only uh, a woman-owned business, but... Um, I'm also mom and wife to the entire management team. And the next slide shows you um, where, we, oh, where we began. Um, we had originally started, we're a nine-year-old company and we were a granola. Uh, we began with an introduction into coffee shops and with four flavors of a true original trail mix and a a peanut butter chocolate and a Delta blueberry and a crayon with a twist. And that's how we started out, just trudging from coffee shop to coffee shop. And um, our, our brand became accepted because it was the only granola that was made with olive oil. So we baked it with olive oil and, and everyone that eats granola understands and appreciates the fact that um, olive oil is very good for you in terms of health properties and digestion and you know, brings hair, you know, attributes to your hair and nails, but a lot of granolas that are out there on the grocery store shelf are made with um, rice, rice fillers and rice syrup and canola oil, which was originally <laughs> intended to lubricate guns and not meant for human consumption. So you'll see our whole uh, management team um, right there. There we are. It's me, <laughs> my husband. Um, who's an attorney and an accountant and our two sons and um, one had a, an MBA in finance and the other one um, just came out of the army which a couple people here in this were in good company today in this group of women but um, that's who
who runs Mitch Cave's Granola, and I've been the boss for nine years, and um, I still have to make dinner at night <laughs> and socialize with my family, and, and there have been interesting and dynamic and challenging times because of that, but at the same time, um, we've grown as a family, and we've grown our brand tremendously. In the next slide, you'll see, you know, I, I kind of put this caution here, be careful what you wish for, because in nine years ago, whenever we get a large order, I would almost dread it because 5 a.m. baking times and um, hot summer days in that bakery and pushing those heavy racks of granola and, and lifting those pans were um, a lot more challenging and um, when we'd get another order, all it meant to me was more work and more time in the bakery and, you know, more aches and pains. But um, we've evolved from a self-baking uh, granola to a bakery facility to a, a, a co-producer. And that's been just such a gift. We spent probably two years working on the co-producer, both in terms of training and recipes and getting the right environment. And Today with COVID, we're so, so glad that we're in a SQF level eight facility because we can be very, very confident that our brand is, is not contagious and it's been prepared from people without any illnesses um, like some of the meat plants today. And um, we're, we're tested for everything under the sun in our level eight uh, facility. So it's been such a blessing that we did that several years ago. And, and it was worth all the hard work. The next slide shows you, uh, uh, you know, kind of some of that introductory hard work, which a lot of these other brands have gone through and they can identify with that. We were the feet on the street that if there was a demo or an end cap that needed to be stocked or, um, you know, some chip, the strip clip that needed to be filled, you know, it was us. And, we spent a lot of Sundays in a lot of grocery stores and, and farmers markets and fairs and events, you know, everything from, you know, athletic events to social events to try and get our brand name out there. But, you know, the family was passionate about it. They knew we wouldn't um, go anywhere unless we put in our, our sweat. And we also didn't want to let each other down. So it was a real... Uh, dramatic effort that we had to put forth and and something that we're really proud of because we wouldn't be the brand we are today without that family um, enthusiasm and, and certainly their energy. So I put together a couple of thoughts and maybe the people on this panel today would identify with some of them about um, you know what what it's been like that entrepreneurship certainly isn't easy. Um, you need to define your own success. You know it's organic growth. Um, for us, or is it customers, or is it marketing increase, or is it is it the financials, or the break-evens, or is it the profit, or is it you know the contribution to society? But you have to define your own success as a brand owner, and it, it's something that evolves over time. Our, our goals are are certainly fluid, um, but it's certainly to adjust them as you progress as a brand and you grow, and it's something we've kind of um, considered to be a, a, a family powwow when we get together and we reevaluate our goals every year and we decide what's different about the last year, last five years and, and, the, and the future going forward. And I think that's very important as a team to do that. Um, and, and, you know, I, one caution that I have for small brands is that you can go to these shows, you can get an order, you can get roped in to situations where you're not prepared to either produce or they want you to have a lot of free fills or situations that aren't good for your brand, but it sounds good and it's not necessarily something you can sustain. So when you, that's one of the lessons that you might learn when you go back. Thank you so much for sharing that presentation. Um, now we're going to hear from Swagger Food Sisters, Erica and Maria. Welcome ladies. Hi, <laughs> um, my name is Erica. My sister here is online as well, Maria, and we're the Swagger Sisters. Uh, we first wanted to say uh, thank you to Stephanie and Jessica from uh, OT uh, Universe for this opportunity in order to discuss our products and Joel Osco. 
so the company was actually first started by our father back in 1978, so ages ago. And what's a fun fact is that actually um, one of our first retail brands was a was for Jewel Tea, which was more delivery based. And we actually provided instant soups to Jewel Tea. And then we actually provided a couple of your staple seasonings, such as your sloppy joe, your taco seasoning, and, you know, easy to make seasoning, the pouch items that you see in the stores that is just a one time serve kind of thing. So it's easy to prepare. And now we've got these. <laughs> So these, this is our choreo brand, um, includes kimchi, spice so right, stir fry, and Korean barbecue. Um, so even though we are doing pouches right now, we primarily were, uh, and we, we actually, um, we, uh, sorry, we expanded into our industrial and um, supplying uh, food, other food manufacturers and food service markets until we basically got the opportunity to provide seasonings for Jewel. So thank you for that um, and our retail brand. And my sister, Maria, will talk a little bit more about each of the seasonings that I introduced um, because she is the culinary expert. Oh, hardly. Anyway, <laughs> um, so so as my sister said, uh, my father started the company in 1978. We did a lot of these staple seasonings that you'd find in the cupboard all the time. And uh, my my parents emigrated from Korea, so we'd always say we should do some things that's sort of a little closer, a little personal and and unique. And so these are some uh, unique seasonings that are clean label, vegetarian, kosher certified, um, and uh, no MSG. And, but very exciting for your taste buds. So we have a Korean barbecue seasoning. Hopefully it doesn't, I have a feeling it looks backwards, but anyway, it's a Korean barbecue seasoning. Um, so you can make anything from, uh, season your short ribs and make some cubby or make a fun Korean barbecue hamburger, super easy. Uh, and we have a garlic ginger stir fry seasoning, not just a stir fry seasoning, also great on salmon and broccoli and all sorts of other cooking. We have a really innovative kimchi seasoning, which brings the flavor of kimchi to anything. And so if you're familiar, it's typically a side dish that's uh, made of uh, cabbages, fermented cabbages, but this brings that flavor to anything. So if you don't wanna have a big jar of kimchi in your fridge, or you know you wanna put some kimchi on popcorn or, or pizza, this is, this is the stuff. And then we have this great uh, salt-free spice or right seasoning, which is a nice blend of herbs and a little bit of heat, a little bit of citrus, and takes the place of salt. And they're all very all-purpose uh, and just they're fun and innovative and delicious for your taste buds. So I'll send you back to Erica because we also have another kind of bonus on our site uh, that we'd like to share. <laughs> So the bonus that my sister is talking about is, especially during this quarantine period, um, I am a AFA certified group fitness instructor as well. My father, or our father, shouldn't say just my father, but our father actually taught us, uh, it's not only about food, it's also about fitness that equals good health. He, it, he just received his shouldn't say just received, it seems like yesterday, but he received his PhD at the age, I believe, 67? at University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. His PhD, he was the oldest person to ever receive his, um, uh, his <laughs> that, that degree, <laughs> or any degree, I'm sure. Um, and so he always taught us, you know, it's about, you know, exercising, about, you know, moderating the what you eat, how you eat, um, and making sure that whatever you intake and whatever you also execute from exercise is what equals a healthy lifestyle. So during the quarantine, I have started a blog, which is also a YouTube channel called Swagger Food and Fitness. So please do go ahead and, and you know, work out with me. Um, I have hit workouts in there, circuit workouts, so everything around the area. Just trying to give back, you know, while we're stuck at home and to eat right, good, um, you could, you know, cook up your, Korean barbecue burger with your kimchi fries or maybe a salmon, uh, garlic and ginger stir fry salmon with your spice of right potato wedges, you know, who knows, you know, Lim you know, endless options with the Korea seasonings and then pairing it up nicely with some fitness. 
So I'll put the link in the chat. And uh, if you subscribe, you work out with me at least twice a week. <laughs> I love that. I cannot wait to try all your workouts. Um, definitely some of the seasonings you guys mentioned, the garlic and ginger, the kimchi one, right on my alley. Um, yeah, if you can just leave that um, information for the workout videos in the little chat function, I'd like to save that too. <laughs> um, yes. So thank you so much to both of you, Erica and Maria from Swagger Foods, um, for sharing that information with us. Be sure to check them out at Jewel Osco um, and pick up their products and check out those workout videos. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Next up, we have Julie of Lifeway. Hey, Julie. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's so great to be with all of you. Um, it's uh, really actually so, so um, special and heartwarming for me. Um, my parents, similar to uh, the, the previous company, uh, my parents and I were also immigrants uh, from the former Soviet Union, so not too far away. Um, and we were actually refugees and we were settled in Chicago. Uh, in 1976, we were one of the first of 48 families that were allowed to settle here in, in Chicago. And with, uh, with our um, migration, my parents brought Kiefer, um, Kiefer to the United States. This was a staple in the Soviet Union and in Eastern Europe. It's a 2,000 year old um, product with a huge, long, long history and folklore. Um, uh, Marco Polo wrote about it in his travels. Um, Cleopatra bathed in it. Um, and the, the, my ancestors uh, were known to live past 100 years of age, and they attributed it to the consumption of, of kefir. And um, uh, they they uh, had this intuitive sense in their gut that they felt better and experienced a sense of well-being after they consumed it. And so, um, you know, fast forward to just a hundred years ago, uh, Ellie Metchnikoff was a microbiologist who received the first Nobel Prize for his work around um, and research around kefir and its impact on the body and the gut. And he actually found that what my ancestors knew intuitively in their gut, that there was actually a lot of science to it and that the gut controls 90% of your immune system. Uh, we now know that serotonin, which is the feel good chemical, we always thought it came from our brain. It actually comes from our gut. 90% of the serotonin is um, created in the gut. And so there is a huge party in your gut. There might not be a party out in the real world right now, but there is a party in your gut. And um, what we've learned now with modern science is that uh, it's really important to consistently replenish the microflora in, in your gut. And so my parents had this, this, this vision when we came to the U.S., um, you know, this was a, a really kind of rags to riches story. Frankly, my mother learned English watching General Hospital, the re really humble beginnings. You know, I was one when we came and a few years after we settled in 1986, my parents founded Lifeway Foods and Jewel was one of our first customers outside of the Russian speaking uh, markets, the little delis in Rogers on Rogers Park. Um, you know, until uh, as, as my parents started talking about it and the benefits started to become more widely known. Um, and actually, we brought, uh, Ronald Reagan brought a case of our kefir to meet with Gorbachev to talk about the, when the peace process was happening. And he said, look at what your immigrants are doing in our country, you know, tear down the wall. So we always say that we were part of the, the peace process and hopefully we'll continue to be so. But um, yeah, so, so, uh, so Jewel was one of the very, very first customers that we've had, one of our longest customers. So we're, it, it, that's why I say it's just so nice to be here with you. It's kind of like full circle coming back. And, and, um, but uh, I, I came to join my father uh, in 1997, shortly right after college. And um, he passed away when I was 27. He died of a sudden heart attack, unfortunately. 
And I have been the CEO since I was 27. I became the youngest female CEO of a publicly traded company um, at, at, after that happened. And I've been running it and working with Jewel and all of our customers uh, for over almost 18 years. Well, just we just hit 18 years. So, um, you know, these are some of our products. I was gonna make a smoothie, but it doesn't seem like we probably have a ton of time, but you can do things with, I, I wrote an entire cookbook the Kefir Cookbook, which gives you tons of like over a hundred recipes um, and shares a lot of that entrepreneurial story. I like to call it a love letter to Chicago. There's really, really warm stories um, that, that we grew up with and, and share some of that entrepreneurial dream. And, and, and um, I'll also share in the chat a, a recent commercial we just put out. It was kind of it came together on my iPhone. My daughter wrote the music for it, but it was a thank you for essential workers, um, for food supply chain, for everyone in our industry, uh, you know, drivers, logistics, ingredient suppliers, all the processors, the grocery store workers, um, everyone who kept things going so that we could continue to live. We, we never really think about how essential our essential workers are. And, and we just got a, a little taste of that right now. So we're thrilled to be there. We have some new items that we're launching, these little um, small keepers for, for tweens, I like to say, with like fun flavors like unicorn cake and s'mores, camp, campfire s'mores. But um, our, our big bottles are what we are known for. We also have farmer's cheese, but check us out online. And just so great to be with you all. That was amazing. Thank you. So much for sharing that, Julie, and, and definitely check out that chat, chat function for the recipes. Um, that, that was so much history, and I loved hearing that Jawaska was one of your first clients and long-lasting clients. I loved hearing about you becoming the youngest CEO. Amazing all around. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, so on to another amazing woman, Erin um, from Erin Baker's Granola. Take it away. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Uh, we've been partners for Jewel for, uh, gosh, almost 17 years now. I remember when I first met Jim Seidler at the uh, Natural Products uh, West. So he's such a such an awesome guy. So shout out to Jim. Um, today, I wanted to share something with you that you can take home with you and use today. It's something that you already probably have. And all of these beautiful women here have it. I'm sure of it. And it's a little something called grit. I know you can't see this because it's probably backwards. But grit is having the perseverance and the passion to reach long-term goals. See that? All of these ladies have grit and everybody has it at home too. If you're here today, you're in good company. We're all passionate about food. We're all passionate about the food business and we're all passionate about being women in business. Yes, ladies. Passion for our purpose is the gas for our engine the thing that drives us forward when we don't see a path underneath us. We must believe heart and soul like I have for 26 years in our passion and our purpose. Take consistent action over time and persevere every day no matter the difficulty. This is how we achieve our goals. I wanna tell you a little bit of a little story about how Grit took this girl and this KitchenAid mixer from a 4-H kitchen to a 30,000 square foot bakery that I have here today. We make millions and millions of breakfast cookies and granola over the last 26 years. And I always tell people, if I can do it, you can do it too. I didn't have a formal education. I did not go to college and I did not have investors. I had this mixer. What I had and still have is an unyielding an unstoppable passion for my purpose and the daily perseverance to keep going. Through rain or shine, good times and bad, I'm sure all you ladies can relate to me, everybody that's listening, through ups and downs, through deaths, through divorce, through illness, all the events that happen to every single one of us if we're lucky enough to be around long enough. I grew up on the kitchen floor. Most of you probably can relate to this, looking up at my mom. And she, man, she managed that kitchen like a general in the army. I'm telling you what, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, her passion is, is cooking and sharing her food and sharing that love and that experience. She drilled into me that ingredients like flavorings and artificial sweeteners 
um, are always too good to be true. Um, you never get something for nothing. There's always a price. So I was always very inspired to utilize whole foods in my products. She taught me that food is best when you eat the real stuff. And her love language is food. And I was marinated in it. And actually, I'm still marinated in it. I'm lucky enough that she's still cooking for me all the time. It's fantastic. Oats were a staple in my mom's kitchen. And she would send us out the door with her famous oatmeal cake. And that is what inspired the breakfast cookie. And this is our fifth packaging iteration. So in 26 years, we've evolved the packaging six times. So some of you might recognize this, some of you might not. Um, but her, her whole concept was, let's take some oats and sweeten it with fruit. And usually the fruit was um, the, uh, the, the brown bananas that we wouldn't use. So, uh, you know, she was tricking us. She called it cake. We thought it was cake. I'm calling this a cookie, but it's really like a bowl of oatmeal in a package. My mom's love for cooking and sharing good food inspired me to start my bakery 26 years ago to bring my own version of that love and passion for healthy, fresh food to all of you. 26 years of baking and distributing and selling food has had its fair share of peaks and valleys for sure. We have been challenged by everything from diet fads, ingredient recalls, recession, inflation, and oh yeah, global pandemic. Did you hear that, global pandemic? <laughs> wow, this is where grit comes in. We remain strong after 26 years because we are steadfast in our passion to bake truly healthy food, to create it with our own hands, to choose the ingredients, to choose the people, the process and the culture, making it our own and the work that we are really proud of. I've always known that this was my destiny as early as I can remember. I'm the engine that drives the passion here at the bakery and I'm lucky enough to have my bakery family who believes in our purpose and they bring 150% every day. My story would not be complete without telling you about what we do to make our community better every day. Every purchase, every day, feeds kids at the Boys and Girls Clubs. So far, we have donated 725,000 breakfast cookies over the last 11 years to 18 clubs here in Washington State. I started this program, like I said, 11 years ago, and we're very proud to make a huge difference in the lives of kids like this. This is Addison Holland. And Addison always had a breakfast cookie in her backpack, even when she only had couches to surf on. Now she's a beautiful graduating senior, and I'm hoping that she chooses Bellingham as her home so that I can help mentor her as she moves forward. The good folks at the Boys and Girls Clubs are truly raising our youth to be strong, resilient, independent, and empathetic, which we know empathy is a big, big aspect of teaching our teens and our children how to succeed in this world. And we're really proud to be bringing a little part of that to the Boys and Girls Clubs every day. So with all respect to all these beautiful women, I'm so happy to be here with all of you. And just remember, we all have grit. Everyone has it in them. Find your passion, find your purpose, and that'll keep you going every day, just like it has me for 26 years. Wow, absolutely incredible. That was amazing to hear. I love hearing about that initiative you guys have going on at Aaron Baker's. And I also loved hearing about um, how you started it all with your KitchenAid mixer right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I definitely need to get some uses out of mine, um, hopefully soon enough. <laughs> Make some bread. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Erin, for joining us today. And now we will hear about Candace Crane of Petal Waters. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this incredible evening. I'm so inspired by all of you founders. You, um, and this just feels so empowering. The energy here is just electric. So thank you for having me and thank you for um, putting this on. I'm Candace Crane. I am the visionary and the founder of Petal Sparkling Botanicals. Um, I'm a Chicago-based female entrepreneur, so I'm really, really excited and proud to be connecting with you all. Um, Jewel is, is actually one of the, the stores I shop in for, you know, our, for my family, so it's, this is absolutely, like, surreal. Um, I was 
very much uh, like some of you have spoken. I am also an immigrant. I was born in South Africa and I moved to Chicagoland area when I was three years old. My dad had a business opportunity to buy um, a packaging manufacturing company here in, in Chicago. And he built ma machinery that bundled probably many of your products and um, wrapped them up, you know, shrink wrap them um, and, and put them in palletizers and that kind of a thing. And, you know, we used to go back to South Africa to visit my grandparents. And in South Africa, it's a tradition to have tea time every afternoon at four o'clock. And my grandmother used to actually sew sachets of, for, for tea bags and make her own tea. And my whole life, I've been making my own herbal teas. And three years ago, I was following the trends of botanicals and floral flavors, really starting to emerge in the beauty space, but also in the food and beverage space. And you may know some craft sodas on the market that have floral or botanical ingredients, but they're also filled with high fructose corn syrup and 20 to 40 grams of sugar. And I looked at my two daughters and I just thought I can deliver something better. So I, my, my vision was to create Petal. It's an organic certified sparkling botanical. So we take the essences of botanicals and fruits and herbs that are globally known around the world and we blend them together to make a beautiful refreshment. We have original rose, elderberry white tea flower, peach marigold basil, lychee rose, lemongrass dandelion strawberry, and mint rose. And um, they all have 10 to 15 calories, two to three grams of sugar from organic agave. And, you know, I think that it's our obligation to really deliver better for you products for the sake of our generation and of course our children's generation. Um, I don't know, like you, you know, I grew up being told that diet sodas were better for us because they didn't have sugar or that the fat free, you know, products were better for us. But in fact, they were filled with artificial ingredients and just the SHIT, right? <laughs> Sorry, um, but so so really, as a mother, as a female, my gut, my grit, all said we need to do something. We need to we need to be better. We can do better. We can lead by example. And um, the you know our our target audience for Petal is women ages eighteen to thirty two, and we hope to be really inspiring for young women to live a better conscious minded lifestyle. Um, where we've seen a ton of praise is with the sober community. And we've had so many women um, that are sober um, reach out to us to say thank you for making a sober alternative to the spike seltzers that are all the rage right now. And they simply don't need to be. Um, we don't need to be living in a culture that is so obsessed with drinking and binge drinking. And so I'm proud to be offering an alternative to, to that lifestyle. So um you can find us at jewel actually jewel was one of our biggest retailers it was the most exciting day um, when we launched we're in the natural and organic aisle um i'm so proud that jewel has really you know the natural and organic set has has grown from like a simple couple shelves to aisles in the store and it's so incredible to see so many brands making such an impact and all I could say is go for it, girls. We got lots of work to do, and I hope that our brands just take over all the junk that's been on the shelves prior to, prior to this time. Thank you so much, Candice. And wow, those flavors sounded amazing. Like, I need to grab one of each when I'm at Jewel for the next time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, beautiful name, beautiful packaging. Absolutely love it. I cannot wait to try them. Um, and now for our last guest of the evening, certainly not the least, is um, someone that we've worked with on multiple programs um, with Jewel Osco, um, like our Festa Italiana event, and we love her cooking. <laughs> I have personally tried it out uh, myself for the first time last year at our in-store Fab Women events. Um, and so now let's welcome Brianna Piro from Piro Sauce. 
Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And this has been incredible to meet um, entrepreneurs uh, and women entrepreneurs. And you are so strong and amazing and so inspiring. So um, thank you, Jewel, for having this and setting this up as well. So um, I'm just going to go through a little bit of our history with Pure Sauce. Um, Pure Sauce originally started in 2012, but we didn't really expand until 2017. Um, we originally started as a restaurant. Um, I, I loved how Erin said, um, love language is food because that is my family to a T. Our love language is family and food. That is all we do in this family. We cook and we eat and we hang out with each other. So I can't wait to see my family again soon. Um, but originally it was, my dad owned a restaurant. So I grew up in a restaurant. Um, I feel like a lot, of, a lot of people on this panel, it was all started with the family and the passion and that grit, that that love of working together and growing something that you're passionate about. And food has so much history and feeling and the, the taste and the smell of it. Um, so the pasta sauces that we sell, this is what I grew up on. So um, being able to share that with other people and having that memory being created around around the dinner table is, is such a huge and inspiring um, uh, feeling for us and we really want to be able to contribute that to, to other families. Um, so my father owned a restaurant in Woodstock and you know I grew up as a busser and a hostess and a dishwasher and you name it. So um, and my mom managed and my sister bartended so it was a big family thing. Um, my grandpa delivered and I mean it goes on and on and on. Um, but so we had a, a restaurant, Italian restaurant, then we started selling the the sauce at the at the restaurant, you know, pints and quarts. And my dad and I started the company as um, Pure Sauce and we wanted to sell to grocery stores. So in 2012, we started this together. Um, and I'm gonna show you some pictures. So this is my, my dad and I on our first demo. Um, <laughs> that was in 2012. Um, and it was just an incredible experience to be able to start a business. And I was 20 at the time. So it was um, 21, 21 at the time. So being able to start a business that young with my father was um, so much fun. Um, he actually passed away in 2016. So, you know, that that um, memory of him, I didn't know if I wanted to continue without him. He was my mentor, my business partner, and you just want to, you know, grow his legacy. So there was a long time where I didn't know, you know, what to do with that. Um, and I put those feelings into growing the business. And now in 2020, I can't believe it's 2020 already, we are almost in 44 states, so it's been incredible. And Jewel actually took us on in 2017. And that was the that was like the moment where I was like, I can do this. <laughs> I didn't even talk to them and they were like, we want your product. And I was like, this is the best day of my life. So um, especially being able to get into Jewel during that like emotional time um, and grow, it was a blessing and I'm so grateful. So, but we have um, a website that has a ton of you know, recipes, we have six products, and Jewel carries all of them. So um, we have a pizza sauce. Um, our pizza sauce is all natural. Um, it's actually vegan as well. All of our products, um, you know, we're, we're very conscious of, of the ingredients and what we put into our product. Just like everyone on this panel, you, when women in general, we look at labels. We want to know what we're eating. And um, it definitely, it reflects on all of our products too. Our puttanesca sauce is an olive-based sauce. Um, we have a traditional marinara, and we grabbed a few to put in the frame here, but um, we also have a vodka sauce, um, a pesto pomodoro, which is like a tomato basil sauce, but a little bit of a heartier um, tomato, so it's chunkier. And then we have a bolognese, which is gonna be um, our meat sauce. So those are our products. And um, again, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to be here, and you have all been so inspiring, so thank you. Thank you, Brianna, for sharing that and sharing the history. And um, I have personally tried out, I believe, like two, uh, two of your sauces and they're yeah. so delicious. So um, definitely check them out. Check out all of the products at Jewel Lasco. I saw someone mention in the um, comments that they love how Jewel has been um, so instrumental to helping um, all of these businesses. And yeah, it's 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 incredible and I'm so happy that Joasco carries your product and I'm able to go inside the store and purchase it. And um, so thank you to so much to Jewel. Thank you so much to you ladies 
for joining us today. Um, this was incredible. I hope everyone that joined us today um, wrote down all of the websites and um, followed everybody. Um, follow their Instagram pages for more information. Check out their websites. Um, I know I'm definitely going to be going back and saving some of these uh, recipes so that I could try them out at home. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this is the second, uh, the second out of three Fab Women events that we have um, happening uh, virtually. So this Friday is our next one. And again, it's at 5 p.m. Central Time. So if you guys would love to check that out in the chat function, there is an Eventbrite link that you can go on there and register for free so that you can hear all about more women, more fab women of Jewel and their products and more information about them. Um, also, there is a, a fab uh, giveaway gift bag um, that you can get sent to you for free. All you have to do is message um, Stephanie at gtuniverse.com, email her and um, send her your full name, your address, and we'll send you a super great gift bag filled with products that um, some of these wonderful women have sent to us to share with you all. So yeah, I'm hungry now after hearing all about these products and seeing them in action. So um, I think that's it for now. I'm so hungry now. I want to go and make some of these products. <laughs> hey, I will, we'll let you guys go, but thank you so much for sharing and have a great night, everyone. Bye. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.